What is good, YouTube? Quinn Way Basketball Analysis coming to y'all with that instant analysis. We're going to call this now the rundown. This is where I'm going to go through the hottest topics, the hottest things around the NBA and cover it all within my special time frame that I cover videos. And we're going to talk about the Chicago Bulls. They have looked a whole lot better. Then they did last year. They added DeMar. He has really gave them another weapon, another scorer, another guy that can get his own shot, another guy that can create shots for other. Lonzo Ball gave them that all-around game, a good perimeter defender, gives them size, gives them somebody that can space the floor and hit spot-up threes, give them that guy that can get out in transition, make plays, and make guys get easier shots. Vucevic still hasn't found his game. But even within that, they still have been highly successful. And their defense has been respectable. Hasn't been the greatest, but it's been, it's been respectable. And that's a question mark that we all have for them. And that's something that they've been able to hold down so far. Zach Levine continues to grow and improve as a player. Really has continued to stay aggressive. Has continued to look for a shot. And has been efficient and has been deadly. It has been a big reason why they have been so tough to beat. Their schedule is a little easy. We'll see what they do against better competition. But this is a good, positive thing for the Bulls. When is the last time they had a record like this to start the season? It's been so long ago. It's just so good to appreciate what they are right now, even if they go down a little bit as the month go through in November and they come back down to earth a little bit. It's still good to see some positivity coming to the Chicago Bull organization. And shout out to Alex Caruso being a good defender and Denver Smaker off that bench for them. And just give a credit to this whole organization, knowing that they was in a, a crossroad where they got a star, an all-star at that, and he just doesn't have enough help, and they really tried to put as much talent around him as they can. The bench still is questionable. But other than that, they've been pretty solid. The Charlotte Hornets got off to a good start. Um, they've been having fun, dancing, and having a blast out there. Miles Bridges has really showed out so far this season. We'll see if he can continue being that weapon. Gordon Hayward still showing his versatility as a passer, as a guy that can create his own shot and then play off the ball. LaMelo having fun, was rookie of the year, showing that he could be possibly an all-star this year for the Charlotte Hornets, up in his scoring, continuing to play mate and continue to be active. Um, this has been a fun team I had to make in the playoffs. I'm not surprised that they're good. I'm just surprised that they this explosive. Their offense has been one of their biggest problems that we've seen that even in the preseason. Hasn't been like that so far to the NBA regular season, but we'll see what continues. The New York Knicks have got off to a decent start after blowing a game that they should have won. We'll see what they do at the end of the day throughout the rest of this month and going into November. They have still relied a lot on Handle Randall to get them buckets, create buckets, and really be the hub. Evan Fournier has shown to be a good offensive fit, Give him the guy that can play off the ball, get some threes up, can shoot some threes off the dribble a little bit. Kimba hasn't really found his footing just yet. But he is a guy that can come in and give you some decent starting numbers. Derrick Rose finally came off the bench and had a great game with 23 off the bench. But it wasn't enough for them to win the game. But the Knicks look more potent. They look more versatile. They have more weapons. R.J. Barrett really still sticking and doing the little dirty work, hitting the shots, hitting the open one, creating every once in a while, driving every once in a while. He has more space to operate, has more weapons around him. All he has to do is to make the play and finish this plays and he can be a solid player for this team the milwaukee bucks have got off to a great start also being that dominant team that we thought we looked at the bucks as a contender in the nba and they have proven that again Giannis continue to be dominant middleton continue to be solid drew holiday is a menace defensively their role players have stepped up and made shots and have been solid defensively for the most part they have a lot of solid to new pieces around and they all have been fitting in pretty well and Giannis, drew holiday and middleton have been leading them to the best of their ability the philadelphia 76ers have got off so an easy schedule. The toughest game they had to play was Brooklyn, but they lost that game, and they should have won it. They could be up 3-0, but obviously they blew that game. Joel Embiid hasn't looked like the MVP or as dominant as we thought that he would be coming into this season. He's been okay. 
but we still expect more from him because he's one of the best players in the league. Seth Curry really having the coming out party, scoring whenever he wants to, being a starter, being more reliable because no Ben Simmons. He's taking advantage of it. Tobias continues to show that he's one of the better um, scoring forward still not that all-star superstar level but been pretty solid you know as a wing scorer the Miami Heat haven't really got off to the greatest start they had a dominant win over the Bucks, but that was a gimme game and then they had a game where they just blew it against the Pacers this is a team that you have to watch for throughout the rest of the season as they get healthy as they continue to build up roles and chemistry and lineups, we'll see if that this team is a really a contender or not. We still see that they can compete with the best, but we also need to see can they beat the best consistently, and that's going to be the question for the Miami Heat. The Atlanta Hawks have got off to a solid start, too. We knew that they was deep. We knew that they had a lot of weapons. We knew that Trey Young, without the foul calling, would take a little bit of a hit, and he has everybody else around him have stepped up and really have become just a dynamic team with a lot of finishers, a lot of shooters, a lot of ball handlers. This is a tough team to defend. We knew that. I think that they'll be at the top of the East just because of that. And they have become respectable defensively, no longer a laughing stock, but also not great or elite. But we'll see what they become as they round out the rest of the season. The Raptors have got Scotty Barnes shining. But we know Pascal is coming back, and he's going to drop those numbers because he's going to drop some of his playing time. So his number is going to come back down to earth. Fred Van Fleet and those guys still struggling, but they're not the best offensive players. They don't really have any great offensive players on this roster, but they're still figuring out a way to play off of each other and still trying to figure out who that guy is going to be until Pascal comes back. But even when Pascal comes back, we already know that he's not a great scorer either, so that's going to be a consistent problem for them. The Pacers still been solid. They've been figuring out a way to get W. They got a W um, against the Heat, and they just struggle to be consistent offensively and defensively. That's going to be the Achilles heels of their season. Cleveland Cavaliers got a lot of weapons, but not enough offensively, not enough consistent weapons, not enough mature elite talent around this team, and they're also not great defensively. Plus, they are walking mismatch, have undersized players at key positions where the great players play, and that's going to be a problem for them. The Nets finally had a blowout W over the Wizards where they finally won convincingly. Kevin Durant still scoring. James Harden still struggling to score consistently, even from the three-point line, even finishing at the rim. He's lacking the exposure. He's, he's lacking the creativity and really has been a little bit exposed since the foul calling isn't there for him. We'll see what they can do defensively. We'll see if they guys can step up. They switch some things up this um, game with the lineups, and maybe that can help them. They are a deep team. They have a lot of talent, have a lot of scores, have a lot of handlers. We just have to see them put it all together. But it's an 82-game season. The Magic are young. They got Terrence Ross. We got to figure out what they're going to do with him. Just a, a team that you have to watch to see what they're going to pe become and what they will be in the future. This is just a season to get guys some experience, to get guys some playing time, and we just have to see them put it all together in the future, just not this season. And the Pistons, we still haven't seen K play. We knew that they'd be one of the worst teams in the NBA, and they continue to show that um, by starting off 0-2. And I don't really see that changing much, you know, throughout the season. The Warriors got off to a 3-0 start. They took advantage of their schedule and the inexperience of the Lakers. But this team is going to be dynamic. They're going to be fun. They're going to get up a lot of shots. They're going to have a lot of spacing, a lot of movement. They're going to beat you together. And then they have the MVP caliber player slash franchise player and Steph Curry, who we know can obliterate any defense or anybody any given night and we've seen him do that already this season against the Clippers and we will see many more of that throughout this year and that's why they're going to be a must watch team the Jazz their bench hasn't been what we thought but they still have been able to figure out how to win Gobert has been dominant in the inside even in the rebounding Donovan Mitchell still has been one of the toughest players to guard even though Davion stayed with them and made it tough but the Jazz ultimately got the W they're going to have to get a couple guys back and they're going to have to continue to play their system and play their game, and they're going to be dangerous. The Wolves got off to a better start. I told you they'd be a better team than they was last year. The lineups are more matched. The players are more healthy, and they're just going to be a tough team to beat. 
defensively, they still going to be a question mark. Offensively, we got to see can Anthony Edwards keep up the efficient player. I mean, efficient play throughout the entire season and still be a dynamic scorer. And Towns, we know what he can bring to the table. D'Angelo, we know he can close. We know he can score. They still have some situations that they need to figure out roster building-wise with this bench and with their starting lineup. And then we can see what they're going to be. Denver just been steady. They continue to ride Jokic and guys around them just make plays and make shots. As long as Jokic is dominant, keeping guys involved and being unstoppable, they're going to be at the top of the West. They fourth right now. That's around where they're going to be at the end of the season. The Grizzlies blew a game against the Lakers, which they had an opportunity to start 3-0. John Morant has been fearless and ferocious, attacking the rim, finishing, playmaking, and the Grizzlies have really became a team that people enjoy watching and enjoy seeing. Bain has really been good for them. Struggled a little bit against the Lakers, but he had to guard LeBron, so it makes sense that it took a little bit out of them. Undersized, really going to have to figure out what they're going to do with that forward position. And they still have some other issues that they got to figure out with the depth in this roster. But that's from the future. They're going to be competitive. They're going to be in the playoffs. They're going to be a fun team to watch. And we can see if Java Rank can lead his team to an all-star appearance and possibly all-NBA team. You know, he got off to a hot start last year, then kind of fizzled off. We can see if he can keep it up this year. Maybe it's different in his third season. The Dallas Mavericks are not the greatest team. We know they have a lot of wings. We know they got Porzingis. We know they got Luka. But they still struggle defensively. They still struggle hitting threes. And they still struggle outside of Luka carrying the load, scoring baskets. And if they ain't going to be a great defensive team, and they're not going to be a dominant offensive team, this is going to be in the middle of a pack team. And that's what they have been, a first-round exit every single season that they've been in the playoffs, and I think that they'll continue until they make some roster changes. The Blazers, same thing. Had an impressive win against Phoenix. Had a dud in their first game. We know that they're going to be a playoff team. We know that they have video game Dame, a closer, one of the tougher players to guard. And they also have a solid supporting cast. They'll be fine. Even if they have elf issues, they should be able to make the playoffs. The Suns looked amazing against the Lakers and lost the other two. But we're not going to worry too much about them. They have a lot of weapons. They have the defense. They have Chris Paul. They have Booger. And they have a lot of guys that fit into what they're trying to do in their culture. They'll figure it out. It's only three games. They'll be fine. The Rockets, still young, still trying to find out what they are and what they're trying to do on the offensive end. Have a lot of pieces, but they have to put a little bit more depth and a little bit more weapons on this roster to become dangerous. They will be at the bottom of the West um, at the end of the day, but it was good to see Jalen Green shine, hitting his threes, hitting the contested ones, switching it up a little bit. He's going to be a fun player to watch. The Lakers have been struggling with consistency defensively, has been abysmal. Well, offensively, they have been inconsistent and really don't know what they're trying to do with a lot of their key players, and that's going to be a problem, finding an identity on both ends of the court, what they're trying to accomplish, what they're trying to do, and getting guys in their roles and getting guys healthy is going to be a key for the Lakers turning their season around and getting to the top of the West. The Sacramento Kings still struggle defensively, still struggle a little bit offensively. Davion Mitchell was a great pickup for them, a defender and a guy that can really be a spark plug and a playmaker off that bench. De'Aaron Fox is still a force offensively. Buddy Hill coming off the bench but can still shoot and get buckets. And other than that, still lacks an inside presence, still lacks defensive identity, and just going to be one of the middle of the pack teams that's going to be playing conversation or out. The Spurs have lack of talent. Lack of elite talent, but they have a coach that's going to find a way to keep them in game, find ways to keep them competitive, find ways to keep them balanced to the best of his ability. So they're going to be respectable. They're going to be a team that you're going to have to come prepare for, and you're going to have to beat them, but they're not going to win enough games because they just lack the talent. The Clippers, Paul George, have been showing out, leading the NBA and scoring tie with John Morant. Don't really have enough around them. They've been in game. They gave a, enough, but they just don't have enough scoring. Just don't have enough to push and umph for Paul George. We know he's a, one of the best players. We know that he's going to go out there and do the best he can. He earning that contract right now. People question signing Paul George to extension. He's going to have a lot of worth this year 
putting himself in the All-Star and All-NBA conversation again. We're going to see MVP caliber Paul George, but will that result in wins? I don't believe it. They haven't won a game yet, and I don't really see that changing. Uh, this should be a losing season, and they should make the playoffs just because they don't have really enough to compete in a tough, deep Western Conference when it comes to teams on a level. And the Pelicans, no Zion. That's been a problem. Ingram has been doing the best he can, but just don't have enough around him. Josh Hart is also out. They just don't have enough right now. Zion comes back, gives them another scoring punch, gives them another playmaker. Then they can really figure out what they're going to do offensively and what they're going to play style going to be. New coach, new system, some different changing players. We have to really see this team healthy to really gauge what they're going to be. But they're not going to be great defensively. They're going to be a little bit predictable because they don't have a lot of space in their shooting offensively. So they're going to be a team that should be at the bottom of the West. But we're starting to see them get off to a bad start. And that could really hurt them as a play on the team. But it can help them get something good in the lottery. And the Thunder have been exactly what I thought they would be. A team that's struggling to score. They don't have a lot of spacing, don't have a lot of shooting, don't have a lot of shot creation. Giddy had a solid offensive game, showing that he can pass, showing that he can rebound, showing that he can score with a floater and finishing game. Um, still going to have to work on the perimeter shooting and the perimeter three and shot creation if he wants to be special in his league. But he should be a solid player. Shea doing all he can. Don't have a lot of around him. Don't have a lot that he can do besides pick his spots when the score, keep guys involved, and just go out there and play as hard as he can. A lot of these guys aren't NBA caliber players. They will be in the future, but a lot of these guys still have a lot of flaws and a lot of polishing that they need. This will be one of the worst teams in the league like Orlando. Have a lot of guys that get to try out. A lot of guys get playing time. A lot of guys get to grow and, and really improve their game, hopefully, over the season. But this is just a trial and error season. See who can play. See what they have. See what they need to work on. And just continue to build that up along with adding pieces in the draft to upgrade their talent and to get back to being the playoff team. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Hope you guys enjoyed the rest of your night. This is the rundown, hot takes of every team in the season. I'm going to do multiple of these every week or throughout the months. Y'all want to hear it. Y'all want to know what I think about teams and players. Why not just cover all of them? Why not just keep it real about all of them? Why not just give y'all analysis on all of them? That's what I do anyway. Might as well do it for everybody. Quinn Wade, that's my analysis. I'm gone. Hopefully, uh, i see y'all tomorrow.